Give me a break, Ralph. Sit over here. You can see better. Do I look like the kind of girl who believes in artesians? Take me home. I can't do that. Why not? I'm out of gas. Now you're talking, Ralph. <laughs> Week at Richards, whole red ripe watermelon, just 10 cents a pound. Agar hands, half or whole, four to eight pound average, a low dollar thirty-eight a pound. And yes, heavy duty liquid detergent. A four nineteen value is only three nineteen for the big sixty-four ounce size. At Richards, we're coming through for you. Richards, the center's coming through. This is KTVL, Medford, Oregon. This is News Center 10, prepared each day by Southern Oregon and Northern California's largest television news staff, and reported tonight by George Warren. With John Gallows and sports, Bryn Hazel and the weather, and political commentary by Russell Sadler. Good evening. No sooner had Klamath National Forest firefighters begun to relax with today's containment of the 400-acre Grider fire, then a series of small fires of suspicious origin broke out at 7 o'clock tonight, 20 miles from the Syed Valley Fire Camp. Fire crews and air tankers were dispatched to the blazes just north of Happy Camp. The combination of ground and air attacks knocked the fires down within two hours and prevented another major blaze in Siskiyou County. Meantime, the Grider fire is expected to be completely controlled by mid-morning tomorrow. For the first time in more than two years, residents of Gold Hill don't have to boil their tap water before drinking it. A new $600,000 water filtration plant began treating Gold Hill water today. Jackson County officials completed tests on the plant yesterday. The town's 900 residents had been either boiling their water or buying bottled water since early 1979. The city had been taking untreated water from the Rogue River. Selma is a small town in southern Josephine County, but as many of its residents are now finding out, a small town doesn't necessarily mean small problems. New Center 10's Mark Bradshaw explains. Clear Creek, as you can see right now, it's almost dry. But in the wintertime, it can be as wide as 200 or 300 feet. And for the many landowners in this area, that is causing quite a few problems. The problems lie in what this creek does in the wintertime. Filled by mountain snow and rainwater, Deer Creek has for many years eroded viable land for many landowners in the area. We've lost over half of our land. Out of five acres, we've lost two and a half acres. We're losing trees off the bank. I've got a pump house that's about ready to fall into the water. We've lost probably five acres since 1964. Nearly 50 residents have organized in an effort to solve these problems. The Deer Creek Association has asked for help from many agencies, but so far no one has stepped forth to assist. Their purpose is to find methods and money to reduce the erosion and flooding and to revive the fish population. They also demand that their property taxes be reduced in proportion to the amount of land lost. What do you want done? We would like a channel, a deep channel, about 10 feet deep and 20 feet wide, cut through the center of the creek. Deer Creek is quiet now, but in the wintertime it's capable of becoming a raging torrent, capable of destroying acres and acres of good land. That's why the landowners here hope that not too many more winters pass before this problem can be solved. Just outside of Selma, I'm Mark Bradshaw for New Center 10. And what about the Bear Creek? Well, there's no reason the Bear Creek couldn't be a good place to fish sometime in the future, or so says a local fly fishing association. The rogue fly fishers this afternoon joined Medford City Crews in a cleanup program along the Bear Creek from Barnett Road North to Highway 62. Volunteers waded into the water to pick out debris, and city workers will later pick up the trash along the banks. 20 to 30 volunteers were expected to turn out late this afternoon to work the creek in 10 sections. The fact that the Bear Creek is used for storm drainage makes it especially hard to keep it clean, according to the fishermen. But with enough public awareness, they say, the creek can once again be a good spawning area for migratory fish. Almost a thousand people with American Indian ancestry are expected to meet for a big powwow near Ashland this weekend. The powwow was the first for the Wolf Band, but not considered to be the last. People with Klamath, Cherokee, Apache, and Sioux blood will be among those represented, but Chief O.A. Bullock says the powwow was planned for the children. We are trying to save something for the children uh, so that they will be able to learn of their 
culture and their heritage by actual experience and watching the older people and do th that do these things and so much has been lost to us throughout the past number of years that we want to bring it back and to uh, enlighten the children and have them educated so that they know what these things are. The ceremonial dances will be held tomorrow night at the Crazy Bear Grounds. And we'll be back with more news when News Center 10 continues. Jim Siegel Chevrolet Honda has just received a special summer shipment of new Honda Civics, Preludes, Accords, two doors and four doors. More than 40 new Hondas. And what prices? For example, new Accords priced from just $67.99. $67.99. Jim Siegel gives you top dollar for your trade and taters financing to fit your budget. Better hurry in. A new Honda is waiting for you now at Jim Siegel Chevrolet Honda Grants Pass. This Friday and Saturday, Robinson Sidewalk Sale will be greater than ever. You can save a lot of money on a huge selection of famous brand name clothing. For example, we have men's sports shirts, values to $18, only $5.99. Women's dresses, values to $54, only $19.99. And save 50% on women's purses. Robinson Sidewalk Sale, it's the greatest ever. This Friday and Saturday only. You can save a lot of money. Nobody does it better. Nobody does it quite the way you do. Sizzler, just maybe the best. Try the Sizzler's delicious deep sea finger lobster. Succulent little lobsters served with a juicy sirloin broiled to order. Nobody does. CIA Director William Casey went to Capitol Hill today as more senators joined Barry Goldwater's call for Casey's resignation. Casey said Goldwater had inaccurate information about his business dealings. He denied allegations he had made $750,000 from investments in alleged improper business dealings. On his visit to Capitol Hill today for a meeting with his Republican congressional colleagues to press for his tax cut proposal, President Reagan gave no indication he's been moved from his staunch support of Casey. A reporter got the president's attention as he was returning to the White House, and Mr. Reagan said he has not changed his opinion of the CIA director. Meantime, a top House Democrat says the administration is still missing the point on tax cuts. President Reagan today proposed $65 billion in additions to his three-year tax cut plan, including a proposal to revise tax rates each year to blunt the effect of inflation. But House Ways and Means Chairman Dan Rostenkowski says the changes don't offer extra re relief to low and moderate income taxpayers, and that's what Rostenkowski and other Democrats want. The first oil rig has arrived to explore for oil and gas in the Georges Bank area in the Atlantic Ocean, about 175 miles southeast of Cape Cod, Massachusetts. The arrival of the 260-foot-long rig put Shell Oil Company ahead of an informal race with Exxon to be the first to drill beneath the longtime fishing ground. A partial crew of 45 to 50 people is aboard the rig, but drilling won't begin until a marine life survey is completed by the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency. A consortium headed by Shell paid a fee of nearly $35 million to the U.S. Interior Department for the right to explore a three-square-mile tract at George's Bank. The federal government will also collect a royalty on any gas or oil produced. The U.S. Geological Survey has estimated that between 150 and 530 million barrels of oil may be found in that area. The sudden outburst of urban riots in England seems to have subsided. Sandy Gilmore takes a look now at the aftermath of the violence. You give the people the right price, take care of them after the sale, and they'll come back and buy another car. It's just that simple. Come see us and get that country discount at Town & Country. Highway 99 North in Ashland. Well, another hot one today for the southeast and those in the southern plains. Many places reaching 100 degrees and over again today. Oklahoma, Kansas, Texas and record-breaking temperatures right along the Gulf and down into Florida once again. Meanwhile, up to the north along the mid-Atlantic coast and a little farther north, temperatures quite comfortable, 73 in Boston, 77 in New York, 80 in Washington, D.C. Showers and thunder showers developing then through the mid-Atlantic coast and kind of spotty activity through the mid-Atlantic over into Kentucky, Tennessee, and along down into Florida and the extreme coastal area 
and also down here on the eastern coast of Texas. Meanwhile, lots of sunshine for the rest of Texas, 102 today, 98 the fifth day in a row of record-breaking heat for New Orleans. Only 76 in St. Louis today, 86 Chicago, 79 Minneapolis, St. Paul, severe thunderstorm warning out for southern Minnesota down into I oh, um, Iowa, excuse me, part of Nebraska as well. Thunderstorm warning out as well up here in North Dakota. Temperature in Bismarck, 79. Scattered thunderstorm activity stretching all the way down here from northern Idaho, down the Rockies, and all the way down into the southwest, mostly in the mountain areas. A uh, freak thing happening in Utah today. A tornado was sighted in a very remote area of Utah, but something that doesn't happen there too very often. 110 in Phoenix, 109 in Palm Springs, 75 in Smoggy in L.A., 69 in San Francisco, 92 Reno, 90 in Medford, lots of sunshine, a few thunderstorms blooming up in eastern Washington, and a chance that they'll be moving down into the easter, eastern part of Oregon over the weekend as well. Temperatures today down a few degrees, and this is down a few degrees before they go up a few degrees by Sunday. 65 in Astoria, they had a trace of precipitation from drizzle. Marine air into the Willamette Valley once again, 72 Portland, 74 Salem, and 73 in Eugene, 65 in North Bend. In the Rogue Valley, 89 Grants Pass, 90 Medford, 84 in Ashland, 93 in the Illinois Valley, 74 in Brookings, 61 Crescent City, Wairika was 90, Mount Shasta 84, over 100 in Redding and Red Bluff, in the 90s in Alturas, Lakeview and Klamath Falls, mid 80s, low 80s in Burns and upper 80s in Bend today. Slight change in the weather pattern, which is not going to affect us too much except make it a little warmer. But along the coast and in the northern sections, it is going to make a difference. We have high pressure out here that's been bringing the marine air in like this. Well, this high pressure is moving inland, and as it does so, the clockwise winds will start to have an offshore flow effect, so that marine air will not be getting in like it has been. Temperatures up along the Willamette Valley and up along the coast as well, and up for those of us in the interior sections a few degrees anyway. In the Klamath Basin, the National Weather Service says it looks like mostly fair weather through the weekend, highs mid-80s. West to northwesterly winds 5 to 15 and gusty at times. In northern California, fair and warm. Highs upper 80s, low 90s. Shasta Dam, 101. Gale warnings are up on the coast. Northerly winds 15 to 30, but 35 to 45 in the afternoon and evening hours through tomorrow night. Some brief night and morning clouds with sunny afternoons through Sunday. Highs 75 to 80. And in the Rogue Valley, fair nights and warm sunny days through Sunday. Lows 50 to 55, highs low to mid-90s tomorrow, mid to upper 90s on Sunday. Gusty winds to 20 miles per hour in the late afternoon and evening hours. And that's the way the week weekend weather looks. I'm going to get my mouth fixed over the weekend. I hope you have a good, safe one, and we'll see you Monday. Tomorrow morning, start a stampede. Start a stampede to breakfast with beef. Introducing Firebrand beef strips from Swift. Strips of pure beef, Firebrand beef, genuine beef through and through, with a crisp, smoky flavor that's made for the morning. So move over bacon, move over sausage, make way for Firebrand beef strips. Firebrand, new from Swift. Contrary to popular opinion, people with money are still spending it, but with infinitely more wisdom. Now consider the BMW 320i. During the past four years, the 320i has retained an astonishing 95.2% of its original price. 95.2%. Now, I don't know about you, but I find it almost impossible to pass up a bargain like that. Test drive a BMW at J. Allen Company. They have an excellent selection. J. Allen Company, a name you can depend on, 1078 Court Street, Medford. The Oregon Senate has adopted a congressional reapportionment plan that may force Congressman Denny Smith to move and Jim Weaver to review his decision to run for governor. And Russell Sadler has a comment. The legislature's congressional reapportionment plan creates a new 5th district in the middle of the Willamette Valley, including Salem, Albany, and Corvallis. The new 5th district includes areas of Salem that have been in Eastern Oregon's 2nd district, where Denny Smith defeated Al Ullman last November with charges that Ullman no longer kept a house in the district. Smith's new 2nd District still includes all of Eastern Oregon, but crosses the Cascades to pick up 